Today, I'll show you how to make a gyoza, Japanese pan fried dumplings. Konnichiwa, I'm Nami from Just One Cookbook. I've been making gyoza since middle school, and it's one of the dinner menu items that my mom and I often made together. We stood in the kitchen and made countless gyoza while talking about life. I find comfort in recipes like this, and I hope you get to create good memories with your family and friends making gyoza. I usually double or triple the recipe and freeze the extra for later use. Find more cooking tips on the website and look for the link in the description box below. Now let's get started. First, we'll make the gyoza filling. Discard the thick core of the green cabbage and cut it into thin strips. Finely chop the strips into very small pieces, then run your knife through the cabbage to mince it finer. Sprinkle one teaspoon kosher salt and massage with your hands. Transfer it to a bowl and set aside until the cabbage is wilted. Mince two green onions into small pieces. Remove the stems from the two shiitake mushrooms and mince the caps into small pieces. Grate the ginger and measure one teaspoon of grated ginger. In a large bowl, add the green onions, shiitake mushrooms, and half pound of ground pork. Add 2 teaspoons sake, 2 teaspoons toasted sesame oil, 2 teaspoons soy sauce, 1 eighth teaspoon ground black pepper, 1 teaspoon grated ginger, and 2 minced garlic cloves. Mix them all together. Knead the mixture with your hand until it becomes sticky and pale in color. Squeeze the water out from the salted cabbage and add it to the meat mixture. Knead the mixture again with your hand to evenly distribute the cabbage into the meat. If you have to step out of the kitchen, this is a good time to pause, cover the bowl, and refrigerate it until you are ready to fold the gyoza. Prepare a baking sheet, either lined with the parchment paper or dust it with a 2 tablespoon potato starch. Place a wrapper in your non-dominant hand. Place a scan 1 tablespoon of filling in the center and press down the filling to remove any air gap. Don't overstuff. Moisten the outer edge of the wrapper. Fold the wrapper in half over the filling but don't seal it yet. Use your thumb and index finger to fold the wrapper into a pleat that leans toward the center. Use your other thumb and index finger to press the folded pleat tightly. I usually make four pleats on each side, eight pleats in total. Press down the pleats to seal any gap. Evenly distribute the filling and shape the gyoza to create flat bottom. Place your finished gyoza on the baking sheet and cover with plastic to avoid drying. Let me show you again. Look carefully at how I move my fingers. Here, one last time before we move on. If you want to store uncooked gyoza to cook later, cover them with plastic and place it in the freezer to flash freeze them until solid. Then pack them in an airtight bag to freeze. When you're ready to cook them, cook the frozen gyoza just like you cook fresh ones but with an extra 1 to 2 minutes of cooking time. To cook fresh gyoza, heat a large frying pan over medium heat and add 1 tablespoon of cooking oil. When the oil is hot, place the gyoza in the pan, flat side down. Arrange them in circular pattern and leave space between each piece so they don't touch. 
Alternatively, you can arrange them in one to two rolls. Cook until the bottom of the gyoza turns golden brown, about three minutes. Then add four tablespoons of water to the pan and immediately cover with the lid. Steam the gyoza for about three minutes or until most of the water has evaporated. Remove the lid to evaporate any remaining water. Drizzle one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Cook uncovered until the gyoza is browned and crisp on the bottom. Here I'm using a carbon steel pan, so I wait until the gyoza skin gets a nice crust and release itself from the surface of the pan. Remove the gyoza to a plate. Repeat the process to cook any additional batches. Serve gyoza with an individual bowl of dipping sauce. Combine one tablespoon of rice vinegar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and a little bit of layu Japanese chili oil. Enjoy! Itadakimasu. I hope you enjoy this recipe and check out more of my videos here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Mata ne!